Hello and welcome to the very first, the pilot episode, who knows if we'll keep it, who knows if we don't, of Dr. B. So today, as you can probably tell from the wide selection of delicious beverages in front of me, I'm talking about beers. A couple of different beers to try, I'm going to try them all, I'm probably going to drink them all. Maybe I'll get drunk, maybe it'll be fun, maybe it'll be dull, who knows. Uh, I'm going to start with this colourful, interesting looking can that says Inhaler Hoppy Pale Ale. It does say that. It's Inhaler by Magic Rock. That is the name of the brewery. It is from Huddersfield in England in the UK. Now, Hoppy Pale Ale. That's a good sound, right? Uh, Hops were added to beer to preserve them better. Um, and as they have antiseptic qualities to make the beer not go off as much because there's bacteria in beer when you brew it. So let's just pour some of this bad boy out. I'm not going to go too crazy to start with. Oh well, it's fine. Colourful can. So, colour of the beer. It's cloudy. It's orangey. Amber, I suppose you would call it. Like, if your piss looked like this, you would have had to drink like no water the previous day. It smells like beer, which is good. I get kind of a fruity note to it. Have you got any helpful description on the can? Not really. It is registered by the Vegan Society though. So Magic Rock, Inhaler, Beer, Vegan Friendly. I don't know how you make a beer not vegan friendly, but this one is vegan friendly. No ground up cows in there. No siree. Now, what do we think about the can? Colourful? I would say it fits into the category of wanky craft beer. So you make the can look as interesting as possible, tell, tell you nothing about the, the type of beer that it is, and just hope people buy it because it looks artsy and awesome in their um, glass fronted fridge and all their wanky friends can enjoy the look of it. Anyway, let's get on with tasting this. So it tastes kind of strong. It tastes quite malty for something that says it's a hoppy pale ale. It's got a bitter aftertaste, which you'd get from hops. Hops add a, a certain bitterness to a beer to balance out the sweetness from a malt. And they, as I said, are stabilizing and a preserving agent. I think they've been added to beer since about the 15th century. And the style of beer called an IPA, an India pale ale, became more popular in the 18th century because beers had to be preserved better to last on a long sea voyage from England over to the continents of India. So. There's some beer facts. Hashtag beer facts. It's fine. I'm going to keep drinking it because I'm really quite thirsty for a beer. I know there's plenty to get through, but I want to drink more of this one, which is probably a good sign. Would I drink a pint of it? Probably not. I mean, it's good that it's in a small can. It's only 4.5% alcohol, so it's not going to knock you on your ass. And after a few mouthfuls, it's becoming more bitter. Can you see that? I'm going to bring that right up there. A definite cloudiness to it, which is fine, which you'd usually get in an unfiltered beer, which is probably, it doesn't say on there, I would imagine it's unfiltered. Not bad. So I'd say that's pretty middle of the road. Yeah, it's acceptable for a wanky can beer, it doesn't make me want to spit it out immediately. So I would say on the Dr. B scale for a smell, three out of five taste, probably another three out of five, just sits right in the middle of the road. So that was Inhaler, Magic Rock, brewed at Magic Rock HQ. As you said, Huddersfield in West Yorkshire, Huddersfield. They probably sound like that, maybe they don't. What are we gonna go for next? So many beers, so many choices. This looks interesting. It's got a sort of a blueberry pancakey waffle thing on the front. So this is by Vocation Brewery in collaboration with the Yeasty Boys. Let's get some of that. Yeah! I've had shoes that smell like that. So this is like, I was looking forward to this one. It's called the Breakfast Club Waffle Blueberry Breakfast Stout. 6.9%. But it smells like my shoes. So, let's see. Uh, Vocation Brewery and the Yeasty Boys. Now, the Yeasty Boys we looked up earlier on are a pair of brewers from New Zealand who don't have their own brewery. They do collaboration brews with other brewers to make funky beers. And that's pretty funky. It's kind of a dark, 
maybe purplish color. I'm gonna bring that in. We've got some of that. I'm gonna get some of that in a minute. I'll work up to it. So it's, uh, no, it's fine. It'll be great. Good, okay. Let's just dive straight in. It feels like it might need a chew. So that's a solid mouth feel there. Yep. So the good news is it tastes better than it smells. It's sweet. This is a this is a stout. So a stout is typically a darker beer. Uses more of the almost burnt uh, malted barley in there than your lighter beers. Usually gives them a much stronger color and a stronger taste. And stouts were brewed darker because typically they would last longer and they would be less prone to damage from heat and light. So when they became popular in the late 17th century, um, there was practical economic reasons for brewing a stout. Let's top that up. What can we say about that? Purple beer. Would you drink a purple beer? Let me know in the comments. I'm drinking a purple beer. So, does it taste like breakfast? I guess. Waffle and blueberry breakfast stout. Now when you start your day with a stout, you know it's a good day to start with. Many a good day of mine have started with Guinness. Or other brands of stouts and porters. What do we think about the can? I mean it stood out on the shelf, which is why I picked it up. Nice white background, strong image there. I didn't pick up the fact that it was sort of an and shape, I guess, between the two breweries. You can see that the smear of blueberry sauce on there is definitely a waffle and blueberry feel to it. Down the hatch. So, usually a porter or a stout isn't my go-to beer, but it's not bad. It's got a sweetness, it's got kind of the coffee, burntish taste that you get from usually a porter or a stout, which comes from all the crystal malts that are in there, and uh, it does definitely have the sweetness of blueberry and waffles. So in terms of the can, I would say it still fits into the category of wanky craft beer, given the can is a decent size though. 440ml, 6.9% volume. You could get drunk pretty quickly on this. I will, I will try and get drunk pretty quickly on this. Um, I would go back to it, you know, if I was going to be swung towards wanky craft beers, if a few more of them were like that, then I would probably, I would probably be a convert. Let's get some ratings done. We're doing ratings out of five. Five for smell, five for taste. That's the maximum. That's the, the Dr. B maximum rating. The smell's not great. It's not blueberry waffles. It is, it's definitely shoe. It's possibly walking around all day doing some hard doctoring shoe. Like a big old hefty boot, boot shoe, that's what it smells like. But the taste, I'm gonna give it a four, four out of five on taste, but only a two, two out of five on the uh, on the smell. Not enough to put drunk old Dr. B off drinking it. So I'm gonna move on to something a bit lighter now. Camden Town Breweries Weeknight Any Day Lager. Crack one of these bad boys. So again, back to a small 330ml can. Standout colours, you probably want to pick it up off the shelf, it's quite a good contrast. And pour it out. As you can see, very, very light. That's like, if your urine was that colour, you'd almost not be dehydrated at all. Dr. B approves. So, this is an Any Day Lager by Camden Town Brewery. Camden Town specialise in lagers and light beers. A lager is typically brewed with a, it's a more wider known and commercially available beer. And it's usually filtered or pasteurized. This one is not. This is an, we can find it on here, on the can. No, we can't. Yeah, there we go. Unfiltered, dry hopped, and full of flavor. As far as the smell goes, it doesn't really smell of anything. There's not a lot of smell there at all. Okay, so a lager, um, a lager, a lager, a lager, lager is, as I said, usually filtered or pasteurized and it's conditioned at a lower temperature and using a, a bottom fermented yeast and that also will work or activate at a lower temperature. Oh, it's quite bright, it's quite nice. It's quite clean tasting. There's not really an aftertaste. I guess it tastes like how it looks, if that makes any sense to beer drinkers. You see a light beer like that and you're thinking, I don't know, Bud Light or a Coors. It's got a bit more flavor than that, first of all, kind of a citrusy note. 
but there's no lingering taste on the palate. Now, as I said, this is a light beer, light-ish. This is only 3% volume. So this is like, this is a palate cleanser compared to this bad boy. Camden Town Brewery, that's London in the UK, for those of you that don't know. Be offended if you don't know. I'm still not getting much of a smell from it though, but the colour's good, I guess. The taste's fine. You could knock a few of those back and you'd be fine. Not fine to drive. Don't knock those back and drive. Or do. No, don't. Definitely don't. But, uh, no, it's fine. Like a refreshing few pints with the guys. I'd, I'd go for it. Hmm. Or a refreshing few pints with the girls. There's not too much more to say about that. It kind of does what it says on the tin. Their description for it is, Weekends get all the good press. We're living for the weeknights. So we made this beer unfiltered, dry hopped and full of flavour. It's lower in ABV, so more like dancing in the kitchen than an all night rave. I'm gonna finish it. You know, this is beer number three. Why not? We've got some heavyweights coming up, so let's knock a few of these back. If you've not got beer, when you're watching this, maybe you should have beer, like, just pause the video, pause it, don't close it, lean over to your fridge, wheel yourself over to your fridge, walk over to your fridge, run to your fridge if you're feeling particularly energetic, grab yourself a couple of beers, come back, unpause, and join me. Are you drinking while watching Dr. P? Leave me a note in the comments section with what you're thinking as you're drinking, as you're watching. Getting full, getting gassy. Oh, if only I was less of a skull, this would be less painful. <laughs> it's, all about, it's all rattling around there. Well, that was refreshing. Let's move on to something a bit heavier. Nice bottle open, right? So, we're going to go for Delirium, Belgian strong beer. Now, this is a ceramic bottle, it's not a glass bottle, which is one of their things as a brewery to do. And this is one of the most popular Belgian beers. Now, they have a, they have a brewery in Tap House, I think, in the center of Brussels, so if you're there, check that out. Uh, look for the Pink Elephant, that's their, their brand logo. Pour some of this. Now, you see that? Get some of that? It doesn't look too far away from the Camden town. Maybe a bit darker. Maybe you'd say like you're only mildly dehydrated if you peed like that. As I said, this is a Belgian strong beer. This is 8.5%. This is definitely in the territory of fuck you up juice. And a few of those, you're gonna fall over. So delirium, as it's known, and is widely known by the Pink Elephant and the name Delirium, is not the name of the brewery. It's The brewery is called the, and I'm probably going to pronounce this incorrectly, so apologies to any Belgians or Belgian speakers there. It's the Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Brewery uh, that make Delirium. And the name was given, or it, it takes its name from the medical term for the symptoms that alcoholics will suffer when they go into withdrawal. And I'm told by my producer that delirious, delirious persons may see visions of mice, although possibly pink elephants, which is why the, the logo. So let's try some. Let's get involved. As far as the smell goes, it smells a bit like a wheat beer, which I think it is. It is a wheat beer. Apologies if you notice a slight difference in the uh, camera quality. We've had to switch over. Hopefully you won't notice. If you're as far along as me, you won't even see a difference. So Delirium, a strong Belgian beer. Oh, there's, you know, there's almost a cheesy note there. I don't know if you want a cheesy note in your beer. Almost as an, an after aftertaste. Like when you think you'd had the aftertaste, then the cheesiness comes in. It does have a typical wheat beer flavor. So big pack of sweetness. You can taste the alcohol, which is maybe a good thing, maybe not. I don't know if it's got, I wouldn't say it's got citrusy notes. It's just wheaty, a wheaty wheat beer. So this was interestingly, or possibly not interestingly, you tell me, make a note in the comments. This was voted world's best beer in 1997, 
it'll definitely, uh, well, if the judges had a few of them, you'd probably say it was the best beer, I guess. There's some in there. Maybe we just sit him over here for now. We've got more beers to get through, and I don't want to fall over just yet. That was nice, though. Like, I probably wouldn't have a lot of them, but a few, maybe one or two, in between some lighter ones, is definitely an enjoyable beer. Let's go for a smell and a taste test. Smell. It's not got a lot of an aroma. Okay, okay, we'll have a bit more if I have to, if I must. There's kind of a, an open field quality, not a grassy quality, but like a like a field of barley or wheat smell about it. It's quite pleasant. You can sit there sniffing it for a while. Like, it's not going to get you as high as huffing glue, but probably a four, four out of five percent, which is maybe a first for a Dr. B. And on the taste, it's sweet. If you like a wheat beer, you'll enjoy it. If you don't like a wheat beer, you should. And, um, but it is strong. You can definitely taste a kick of alcohol. I'm going to give it a three. Three out of five on taste. And I'm going to finish it off. Okay. So, next in the order of drinking, we're going to go for an Innocent Gun Blood Red Sky. Now what you'll notice, similar to the last one, we've gone for a bottle this time, which puts them firmly out of the remit of wanky craft beer, I think. Wanky craft beers always seem to prefer a brightly coloured can like this. Whereas your traditional ales, your lagers, lagers comes in cans obviously, but um, I think your your craft beers, the ones that have had an explosion of recent, have to have a brightly coloured, contrasting, eye-catching can. And uh, that's what they use to sell the product. So we're going to go back to a more traditional Scottish ale with Innocent Gun Blood Red Sky. Scottish ales, as this one is probably a Scottish heavy, are usually darker in colour, maltier, less hoppy. Now as I pour this out, you'll notice straight away the depth of colour in there. Blood red sky, that's an appropriate name for the colour of beer we've got going on there. If your piss was like that, consult a doctor, a doctor that's not me, because there's probably blood in there. Like, not in this beer. In your piss. If there's blood in your piss, see a doctor. So this is from the Edinburgh-based brewery. This is a, uh, a full-flavoured traditional ale, which has been matured in X rum barrels to give it that uh, rum sweetness and spice. So that's why you, you see it right there on the label, rum barrel red beer. And it lives up to that name. Smell. It smells like rum. Gently, but it's got that rum sweetness about it, which um, is very pleasant, very enjoyable. Hold on. I wish I had a nose on my skull. Maybe that's why I couldn't smell anything on the last one. No, that's very nice. It's definitely got the the, the heat and the spice from a rum. Um, so let's get let's dive right in. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's got a sweetness. Like, if you've got a sweet tooth. Go out and pick up some of those now. Okay, pause the video. If you've been drinking already, walk. Go and get some. If you haven't got any, send me a mail and I'll post them to you. That is delicious. That's got the spice and the sweetness from the rum coming through, gently made mild by a Scottish heavy beer. If so you haven't got that kick of alcohol, that harshness that you would sometimes get from a rum, if you were to drink neat rum, which, let's face it, we all have, out of your shoe. Oh, that night, by the canal, drinking rum out of a shoe. Anyway. Mm. So you've got the depth and maltiness from a, from a Scottish heavy. A nice traditional ale. Mm. Like a cinnamony kind of sweet molasses note from the rum. I'm not ashamed to say it, I'm gonna finish it. So the producer has taken the cut, the percentage cut from my bottle, but I'm gonna finish it. I like this beer and I'm not ashamed to say it. But you know, after five other beers, you tell me a beer you don't like. So let's get some ratings done. 
Let's get some Dr. B ratings. Hmm, that slight questionable quality, you think? What am I smelling? Am I on the beaches? Am I smelling tropical rum smells? The heady mix of a holiday attitude where you don't care about life anymore and just, just raw sugar? A muscular Caribbean man? Rubbing spices into your chest? It sucks on a fresh coconut? No, it's probably just the, the rum barrels that they're raising. So for that reason, I'm gonna score that five for a, on the nose, a scent rating of five. And for a taste, I'm gonna give it a five, why not? Out of the six beers we've got, we've got five and a five. So, if you weren't paying attention, that's the top score for Innocent Gun, Blood Red Sky. Try it. If it's available near you, grab one. If it's not, Write angry letters to all your closest supermarkets until they stock it for you. Or maybe you're going to click the link below and you can grab some from Amazon. That might be a thing. That was a lighter one. Let's just... What? You know, it wasn't great, so let's just use it to wash the glass. Hmm. That's interesting. Going back from here to here is like, if you went back in time and you could redo something you've done in the past you'd probably just replace it with stronger beer so that's that's the comparison okay so palate cleanser just a little bit of palate cleanser mm, it's hoppy and cleansed much more bitter the second time around because of all the sweetness from the last one so moving on to our final and sixth beer. That's right, six beers in the time it's taken you to watch this video. I'm gonna go for a Brewdog Quench Quake. So Brewdog, another Scottish brewery. Uh, let's just crack it open. So Brewdog started in 2007 in Northeast Scotland and claimed to be on a mission to make people appreciate and be passionate about craft beer. Which all sounds well and good, doesn't it? It all sounds fine. You think, great, they're going to energise the market and get people interested in craft beers. And as the bones of a Scottish person, deep down, I should like Brewdog in theory, in, a, in my patriotic ways. I should go, great, I great Scottish beers, let's get some more of that. But, but... All Brewdog beers taste the same. In my considered 400 year old dead skull opinion, they do. But maybe this one's different. So this is a grapefruit and tangerine sour. Let me read you the description. If you thought they were, if you thought putting them in a bottle saved it from being in the wanky craft beer category, <laughs> you were mistaken. Let me read you the description. Buckle up for this juice bomb of a sour beer. That's right, sour beer. The first tremor of tartness hits and hold on tight for a citrus blast of seismic proportions. Tectonic plates of lemon, tangerine, grapefruit and tart apple agitate the pie crust and biscuit backbone. What that means is we took our normal beer and we put some citrus juice in it. That's a jaded opinion. Anyway, let's get involved, let's try it. I'm so excited. Pale. Yeah, it's not that pale. So I think we've got a darker colour than the town than the Camden Hills brewery. Let me get some of that. That's like that's mild dehydration. That's if you drink all of these and go to sleep without drinking any water, you're probably looking at uh, yeah, maybe something like that. The morning after, in terms of your your urine. Okay. It smells. Okay. So picture yourself. You've woken up. You're in a hotel, you don't know where you are. It doesn't matter, you're in a hotel. You wander down to the lobby, you think I'll just I'll just have a few bits from the Continental for breakfast. You see there's some ham, there's some cheese, over there there's some bacon and eggs. You think, oh bacon and eggs would be fine, but I've just had, you know, however many beers. Some of them were pretty strong. I think I'll just go for Continental, maybe some fresh fruit. You head over to the fruit section, you grab yourself a bowl, you think, oh, those look nice, those those halved grapefruits. I'm gonna get some of that. That's exactly what that smells like. 
That's grapefruit. All over grapefruit. Which it says on there, let's be fair. Grapefruit and tangerine, it's a sour. A sour beer. As the name suggests, a beer that is deliberately sour. And oftentimes they're made by allowing wild bacteria into the brewing process. And it can take months to, to properly ferment a sour beer. So if that's something you think sounds great, cool. Sour beers. Now it's possible that that's not how they would make this beer. I didn't look into it too much. It could just be the introduction of the, the fruit juices that would make this into a sour. I've talked a lot before drinking this. You can, maybe you can tell I'm trying to put off drinking it. You know, like here we are, we're reviewing beers. Let's try it. Brewdog, quench quake. Qu -qu -qu quench quake. Quench quake. Okay, so straight away, like the first thing you notice is that here, tangerine is definitely, that's definitely the first taste I get. And when I'm drinking beer, that's not a taste I'm enjoying. So, let me give you an objective opinion. First taste. It tastes like a vegan who's only eaten fruit for two months is vomiting into my mouth. Oh God, it's so sour. It is sour. So, the label says it all. There's tangerine, there's grapefruit, it's sour. It doesn't feel like I'm drinking a beer. So maybe if beer's not for you, you might want to try it. A bit of a malty aftertaste, but the first thing and the only thing you're going to taste are those two fruits that they've mentioned, grapefruit and tangerine. So if you're on a health kick, well, don't drink beer. Don't drink that. No, do drink that. I'm not even enjoying it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brewdog. I'm sorry, nation where I was originally from hundreds of years ago. That's, that's not enjoyable as a beer. Well, it's all very much personal, whether you enjoy a beer or not. I don't like it. However, the producer says, bottoms up. It's very much, tangerine is the real, the flavor that comes through. So on the nose, it's grapefruit. On the tongue, it's tangerine. Oh, here we go. Oh God, oh, more of it. Oh, there's more in there. There's more in there. So, in terms of the smell, if you give that a rating, if you were to walk past a scented candle shop and you smell that, you think that's quite okay. It's grapefruit, I'll be fair, I'll be honest. Four out of five for smell. Because it does smell quite pleasant. If it's what you're looking for, in a beer though, and let's bear in mind, I'm a skull that enjoys beer, that's not great. I think it's mandatory to give a one. One could be the lowest rating that you can give something because I was forced to drink it. Taste-wise, one. Smell-wise, four. It's not, that's not the worst thing you can find. Mm, is it? Is it the worst thing you can find? I mean, dog urine. You could drink dog urine. I don't condone it. But other people would say that's amazing. Other people will lie to you. Dr. B will never lie to you. That's not an enjoyable beer. Okay. On a positive note, if you enjoy Haribo's Tangfastic, you might enjoy this beer. Anyway, we've done the rating. You've seen what I've thought of all these beers. I came to the point where they've all gone to my head. If I had to recommend one, if I had to think of, mm, which one would I want people to go out and buy based on this video? I would say it was the Innocent Gun Blood Red Sky, closely followed, surprisingly, by the Breakfast Club, the collaboration between Vacation and Yeasty Boys. Now that I look back on it and re regret that there's no more in the can, it was quite nice. It was quite sweet. It was a good introduction to stouts. If you don't like beer, or you don't like, if you think you don't like stouts or porters or dark beers, maybe give that a try. Tell us what you thought of this video, leave a note in the comments below, subscribe if you thought it was good, send me horrible remarks if you thought it was bad, here's the Twitter account, here's the Instagram account, uh, leave me a comment, tell us what you think, what should Dr. B talk about next? So this is Dr. B telling you, and uh, buy more beer and leave me a comment.